The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds over taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Recently, a team of psychologists set about to find out whether human beings are content to live and work for money alone. The result? Studies in more than 200 industrial firms, said Dr. Rensis Lecaire of the University of Michigan, proved that high productivity almost always occurs where managers have been able to harness motives other than the pay incentive motive. Most importantly, a person needs to feel a purpose in his or her work. That creates satisfaction on the job. But what about you? Are you satisfied in your life? on your job, in your work. How can you find a deeper sense of satisfaction, meaning, and purpose? 2,000 years ago, there lived a philosopher who said, if you are faithful in the small things, you will be faithful in the large things as well. But if you're unfaithful in small matters, you can hardly be trusted with larger ones. Give your best energies to life and its opportunities, where you are and as you are, right here and now, and you will become ready for still greater ventures in the future. In a car or truck with a manual gear shift, you don't start in high gear, but in low. And you first attain maximum speed in low before shifting into a higher gear. You may feel impatient that your life is not moving rapidly enough. Your progress may be slow. Low gear at present, but progress in perseverance. Seek to attain the maximum potential as you are now. Attain optimum speed in your present gear, and you will be ready to shift up when the time comes. But when the time does come for shifting, don't hesitate to act. Spiritual progress is exhilarating. One principle of human greatness is to act without procrastination. To postpone a problem is not to solve it. To delay a dilemma is not to end it. It's as if you overdrew your checking account. The bank sent you a statement of the fact. You sent them, in turn, a check to cover the amount you overdrew from your checking account. Illusory solutions do not solve real problems. There's nothing about being a person of deep faith which should prevent you from exercising deep thought. The inward serenity of finding and knowing God will, in fact, render you many-fold more competent to solve your daily problems with intelligence and cheerfulness. Once you find God, you will then be prepared to do everything in your life better than before, because you yourself will be better than before, living as the son or daughter of God. You were born to be, and in truth, you really are. A courageous and creative person can turn even seeming failures to good advantage. Suppose that two salesmen are talking, neither one has made a single sale all day. The first one laments, but he hasn't sold anything, and that's how he summarizes his day. He hasn't sold anything. The second admits he didn't sell anything either, but he says, I made some valuable contacts. He has the ingenuity, the creativity, to know that even supposed failure can be channeled constructively. There is power in persistence. And as a son or daughter of the living and most high God, you can begin to see your problems as camouflaged possibilities. You can learn to overlook problems and mishaps when your enthusiasm is directed toward some higher and greater goal. Remember the story of Alexander Graham Bell working with his assistant Thomas A. Watson on June 2nd, 1875 in that Boston boarding house. Bell accidentally upset a jar of battery acid on his clothing and he said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Watson happened to be in another room at the time, but he heard Alexander Graham Bell's voice coming to him over the copper wire. And according to the historians and the biographers, Bell instantly forgot about the spilled battery acid on his shirt and his excitement over this amazing revolutionary discovery. In the same way, the problems, sacrifices, vexations, and perplexities of your life, your life today and tomorrow and this week and this month, will begin to seem much less important when you wholeheartedly dedicate your life your purpose to the exciting work of doing the will of God, building the kingdom on earth. In the ongoing enthusiasm of loving God and God's will and wisdom for your life, your lesser disappointments will be forgotten. They will be eclipsed by this joy, this enthusiasm. A famous trainer of prize fighters was once asked, what is the difference between a good boxer and a great one? And he replied, when the fight gets tough, a great fighter lasts five minutes longer. 
five minutes longer. Develop your endurance. One of God's greatest gifts is the power of persistence. Cultivate determination. John Robert Seeley wrote, No virtue is safe that is not enthusiastic. William Lyon Phelps once asked William Harper, one time president of the University of Chicago, at the end of a long lecture day, how do you keep so enthusiastic, even so late in the day, especially after teaching a subject as dry and intricate as Hebrew? And Dr. Harper replied, I do it this way. If I have no enthusiasm, I create it. God has given you the power to choose to live enthusiastically. Get on fire for God, said John Wesley, and people will come to see you burn. May your soul burn with the desire to do the will of God and let the love of God surge in your soul. Someone has written, there is beauty in the forest when the trees are green and fair. There is beauty in the meadow when wildflowers scent the air. There is beauty in the sunlight and the soft blue beams above. The world is full of beauty when the heart is full of love. If you will fill your heart with the love of God and the love of others, you'll discover the beauty of life. But the source of love is divine. The two great commandments are you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Wrote the poet Charles Henson Town, I need not shout my faith. Thrice eloquent are quiet trees and the green listening sod. Hushed are the stars whose power is never spent. The hills are mute, yet how they speak of God. All the universe bears testimony to the power and glory of God. The heavens declare his glory, and the firmament shows forth his handiwork. This creator God, the first source and center of all things and beings, the creator, controller, and infinite upholder of all reality, this God loves you and calls you to live in love and fearlessly in faith. The philosopher-educator John Dewey said, To me, faith means not worrying. Or could it be more than that? Could it be that not worrying is one of the symptoms or byproducts of having faith? But faith itself is a committed conviction so intense that it actually molds and motivates your way of life moment by moment, day by day. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote in a letter to Thomas Carlyle that for lack of faith, many a man has died outside the door to peace and joy, died with his very hand on the very latch, Yet lacking the faith to open it, human living at its best requires faith. Have faith in God, said Jesus. Have faith in God. Trust God with your life, your time, your eternity, your present, your future. No matter what your problem or vicissitudes may be, trust God. Everyone at times faces disappointments, rejections. Whether it's someone saying no to a marriage proposal, an employer turning down your application for a job, or that man who had written a new national anthem but the people just wouldn't stand for it. Whatever your frustrations and vexations, you can find an inward strength. The power of persistence and renewal in prayer in turning to God, in sharing your secret hurts, hopes, and dreams with the Eternal Father, the living God, whose will and wisdom will inspire and instruct you in the more meaningful ways of living your life. For a bit of God is in your very mind. And to follow this gleam of truth is to live with a new power, a new purpose, a new insight, the ability to be creative and to improvise in the midst of problems, just as the mountain dwellers of Nepal, who daily climb in the Himalayas barefoot, sew stitches in their soles with needles and string when the calluses crack on the bottoms of their feet. So every mortal must learn the art of patching and mending his or her life in a variety of ways. Hemming frayed nerves, stitching together torn hopes, letting out the seams of old philosophies too small to fit your larger outlooks as you grow, as you progress. A great philosophy keeps life ever in repair and ever in revision. It is a fascinating process to progress as you live day by day, to grow spiritually in strength and a sense of adequacy and capability. Your faith, it is your faith which authorizes God to transform you. Have faith in God, but don't put it off till some other time. Don't procrastinate on it. Have faith in God here and now, wherever you're listening on this planet, to this worldwide broadcast. This moment, have faith in God. Years ago in the 1800s, the steamship Central America, on a voyage from New York to San Francisco, 
sprung a leak in mid-ocean. Another vessel, seeing her signal of distress, bore down upon her, and perceiving the danger to be imminent, the captain of the rescue ship called out on his megaphone to the captain of the Central America and said, what's wrong? And he said, we're in bad repair, we're going down, but lie by till morning, was the answer. The other captain said, but let me take your passengers on board now, because I believe you're sinking. But because it was nighttime, the commander of the Central America did not want to risk sending his passengers away, lest some of them might be lost in the fog and the dark and thinking that they could keep afloat a while longer. He called back and said, lie by, stand by till morning. And once again, the captain of the rescue vessel called, no, you'd better let me take your passengers on board now. But the captain of the Central America called back through his megaphone, no, stand by till morning. It's too dark and foggy to attempt the rescue. About an hour and a half later, the lights of the ship, the Central America, began to twinkle out. And although no sound was heard, that great ship, the Central America, went down and all on board perished because it was thought that they could be saved better at some future later time. Do not put off these matters of immediacy and import which are before you this very moment. Your return to God, your faith in God, do it now while you're thinking about it, while it's on your mind, wherever you're listening to this broadcast. I call you to turn to God with all your heart, for now is the hour, now is the appointed hour of salvation. Give your life to God and all things will become for you as new. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written things on finding God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death. All of this, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U. U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.